funny YouTuber chart, very small percentage, subscribe. White and purple Pikmin hold a special place in my heart. Pikmin was way too difficult for my brother and I, so back in the day we had to give Pikmin 2 a try instead. I was fascinated by the introduction of these new Pikmin for multiple reasons. For starters, they were different shapes and sizes to our original three, and the way we obtained them was pretty unorthodox. How are you going to tell me these Pikmin don't have an onion? So I just have to sacrifice my existing Pikmin to some underground flower? Yes! And the part that really got me was that one nighttime hit, instead of going into an onion like any other Pikmin, these little guys should get to party with the captains overnight. Speaking of unorthodox, let's talk about the white Pikmin. With the introduction of white Pikmin also came the introduction of a new hazard, poison. Just like reds to fire or yellows to electricity, white Pikmin had full immunity to their respective hazard. Probably due to their smaller size, white Pikmin were also much faster than the other types. Along with their poison immunity and their greater speed came their large red eyes, which basically gave them x-ray vision. White Pikmin were able to dig treasures hidden underground, then other Pikmin could join in after the treasure was somewhat visible. The final and funniest power of the white Pikmin is that their bodies are so poisonous, when they get eaten by an enemy, the enemy takes a lot of damage, or in some cases, just dies. As funny as it may be, I think Nintendo made the right choice here. White Pikmin aren't as expendable as the others, it's kind of a hassle to get them so you wouldn't want to just sacrifice them for no reason. On the other hand, if they had their own onion, white Pikmin would become way too overpowered due to the fact that you wouldn't have to fight anymore. Just let the creatures feast on your white Pikmin, then make more with their dead bodies. For once, I'm proud to say Nintendo did a good job balancing their game. <sighs> Purple Pikmin. How could you possibly hate them? They're notoriously known as the most overpowered type in all of Pikmin. To some, they even rival the Bulbman, a Pikmin type that has immunity to every single hazard. But why are purple Pikmin so busted? You see, these little guys are dangerous. For starters, they have a 2 times damage multiplier. To put that into perspective, Reds, the attack Pikmin, have a 1.5 damage booster. So not only do they deem Reds useless in combat, Purple Pikmin also have a 1 in 3 chance of stunning enemies on impact. Now at first that doesn't seem too crazy, but what happens when you throw 5 purples? What about 10? 20? Chances are you won't even need 20, because by the time you throw your 13th purple, the enemy is already more than dead. To make things even better, you don't even need to throw your Pikmin at the enemy. As long as they land near the target, the enemy will still get stunned. These Pikmin are so canonically powerful. They're the only creature we know of that can defeat the Water Wraith, a being that literally exists in another dimension. Purples also have the carry power and weight of 10 units, which actually isn't overpowered in my opinion, it just makes it easier to transport things back to the ship. So, what's Nintendo's master plan in balancing these guys out? They're a little slower. That's it. I find it ironic how we were just talking about how balanced white Pikmin are, and now this. But surely purples were reworked in Pikmin 3, right? So in Pikmin 3, purples and whites weren't included in the main story. Instead, they were only available in mission modes. White Pikmin basically went untouched. They kept all their traits from Pikmin 2, except poison isn't even a hazard anymore. Purples, on the other hand, got nerfed to the ground. They no longer have the ability to stun. Their damage multiplier got sent back to 1.5, and when you throw them at enemies, they don't even latch on. They do this weird thing where they slide off, then have to re-grab their target and start attacking again. So how would I change whites and purples in Pikmin 4 to be more balanced? Let's start with the white Pikmin, because in my eyes, they're perfectly balanced. White Pikmin will be exactly as they are in Pikmin 2. They'll also become the fastest diggers instead of yellows, and once again, only white Pikmin can dig up unseen treasures hidden underground. For purples, I'm going to remove the 2 and 1.5 damage multiplier. They are obviously stronger than the other Pikmin types, so I think a 1 and a quarter damage boost is tolerable. I'll give them their signature stun abilities back, but not as broken as it was in Pikmin 2. Instead of having a 1 in 3 chance of stunning an enemy for 5 seconds, the stun will have a 1 in 10 chance of activating and only last for 2 seconds instead. This introduces a greater risk to reward of using purples instead of reds. Although reds are a lot more consistent with a steady 1.5x multiplier, 
Purple Pikmin have a small chance of stunning the enemy and still have their leg up over the other Pikmin with their 1.2 times multiplier. In the Pikmin 4 trailer, we see Ochi has the power of 10 Pikmin. I know Nintendo wouldn't want Purple to clash with their brand new puppy, so Purples are now only going to have the carry power and weight units of 5. All in all, this is the best I could do when it comes to rebalancing our beloved cave Pikmin. I genuinely hope we get to see these guys in the main story, and we probably will. They're front and center at the box art, and they're featured on a lot of promotional work too. But what do you guys think? How would you rebalance these old Pikmin types to be more viable in Pikmin 4 without breaking the game? Let me know your theories in the comment section below. Purples and whites have always been my favorite types of Pikmin, so I really hope Nintendo does them justice. Pikmin 4 comes out in 32 days.